Hello, this is Jack from tofluency.com and today we're going to look at the world's largest ranking of countries and regions by English skills. So it's going to tell us which countries speak the best English. And we're going to see different countries by their level of English. So what I want to know is where is your country in these rankings? So we're going to have a look at those in a second. And why do you think your country is where it is? Because in addition to looking at the rankings, we're also going to read an article which talks about why Scandinavians are so good at English. So the first thing you'll notice is that Sweden is number one. So Sweden is a country which has the highest level of English. And we're obviously talking about non-English speaking countries here. So we're not including the UK, America, Ireland, etc. So if you have a look here, it says global ranking of countries and regions. And they categorize these into very high, high, moderate, low and very low. So just take a moment, look on your screen and try and find your country and then start thinking about the comment you are going to leave because you can do so at the end of the lesson and tell me why you think your country is very high or very low or moderate. Now, I've made a couple of videos on football managers and their level of English. And we looked at how Jurgen Klopp, who is from Germany, which is number 10, how he learned English through friends and he, he has a high level of English. Now, we also looked at Unai Emery, who is from Spain and is now learning English through Peaky Blinders. And his English isn't as good, but it just seems like that is normal based on their countries. So Sweden is number one, Netherlands number two, Singapore, Norway, Denmark, South Africa, Luxembourg, Finland, Slovenia, Germany, Belgium and Austria. So those are the top 12 countries when it comes to English proficiency. Now this website also includes a PDF which I encourage you to download and read because it has some key findings and it's interesting because it talks about some trends. So it says English proficiency varies widely between industries and job functions. It also says that Africa showed the strongest gains in English proficiency. And this is interesting. In, in Asia, English proficiency did not improve despite high levels of investment in English. So in Asia, these countries have invested in English, but they haven't seen uh, improvement, which I find very interesting. But I think there's a key point to why this is the case. I'm going to talk about this very soon. So again, go here, go to this website and have a look at the data they have and be sure to download the PDF which you can do here. Now here is an article which talks about why Scandinavians are so good at English and I think there is one key reason which just isn't emphasized enough. I think this is the most important thing but we're going to have a, a read of this article and look at some of these key points. And I'm going to give you my opinion. So we'll just read the first paragraph. Swedes have the best non-native English skills in the world, according to the eighth edition of the EF English Proficiency Index, what we just had a look at. Sweden's Scandinavian siblings, Norway and Denmark, also place in the top five. Of course, anyone who's visited Sweden, Norway or Denmark won't be surprised by the findings. While there are plenty of problems visiting the region, not least the epic price tags, communication isn't one of them. So let's have a look at what Forbes believes is the reason why. The first one is a happy family. And to the untrained eye, English and the Scandinavian languages may not seem to have that much in common, yet the truth is quite different. All are members of the Germanic language family, itself a branch of the Indo-European language family spoken natively by more than 500 million people. So they're saying that the structure of the language is quite similar because it comes from the same family. There are also a lot of loan words. So 
English and Scandinavian languages have lent each other many words over the years. And a big reason for this is the Viking invasion of England in the 8th century, if I remember correctly. Now, this part, I don't think is that relevant because it says... English is taught in Scandinavian schools from a young age. As soon as children have mastered reading and writing their native tongue, English is introduced. The age varies by country and region, but generally speaking, every student will have undergone at least a year of formal English language education by the age of 10. I don't think that's a big difference to a lot of countries. So many countries introduce English lessons at an early age, but a year before 10 is not that drastic. It's not that drastic at all. This next point I think is the most important. I think this is the number one reason why people in Scandinavia can speak English so well. Cultural immersion. By the time Scandinavian kids reach that age, 10, most are already quite familiar with English. Young Scandies have always been exposed to a lot of international content, but now the likes of YouTube and Netflix have made English entertainment more accessible than ever before. I don't think that's really that important. The next bit is, turn on a Norwegian TV channel and the chances are you'll be hearing an English language show with Norwegian subtitles. If you turn on the TV in Norway, it says, in most cases, you're going to be watching something in English as a kid. Unlike many other countries, English shows are almost never dubbed. Whether a Scandinavian speaks English with a British or American accent has a lot to do with that kind of with what kind of TV they prefer. This is it. This is the key. Norwegian kids and kids in Scandinavia are watching TV in English. They're getting lots and lots of input from an early age and the input is all in context they have they have the subtitles in norwegian or swedish but they're watching tv in english this is huge this is the reason why it's because they have so much input and i have talked a lot about input in the past i'll leave a link to a video on your screen and i'll also leave one in the description and it just talks about why input is so important. And this should give you motivation to get more input. Now, I've visited certain countries, um, for example, Spain, and everything is dubbed. Kids don't grow up watching TV. Yes, they have more access to TV now in English, but if you don't do it, then it makes no difference. There are a couple of other reasons this article gives. For example, a region of explorers so they might go to London for weekend breaks, but so do people from France and Germany and Spain. And Spain is in the average tier. The next one is a professional skill. Perhaps it's that inner explorer, but even after almost a decade of formal English language education, many Scandinavians take things a step further by studying abroad. Whatever subject they're studying, it's highly likely to involve immersion in an English language environment. Now, again, this can help, but if you're just doing it for a couple of weeks every year, it's not going to make a big difference. The key is immersion. Immersion is key. It's this sentence here that I think is just incredible. Turn on a Norwegian TV channel and the chances are you'll, you'll be hearing an English language show with Norwegian subtitles. Immersion. People are immersed in English in Scandinavia because they're watching British or American television. So this should give you the motivation to do more in English, to watch things in English. A lot of you are probably already doing this, but just keep going, keep doing this because it's going to make a big difference. So going back to this, definitely have a look at this report, download the PDF guide, and then let me know what you think. And be sure to leave a comment telling me where your country is and why you think it is there. And also, please let me know what you think about what I have talked about today. So leave that comment and then get my book, The Five Step Plan for English Fluency. Again, I'll leave a link in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll speak to you soon. Bye bye.